We weren't sure we were going to get him. We had some sort of timing challenges. We had him earlier in the program, but we're so thrilled that he could be here. I'm talking, of course, about the CEO of Binance. This is crypto's juggernaut, a big global sprawling exchange. And I'm talking about Changping Zhao, of course, otherwise known as CZ. To interview him and to see what his outlook on the future is, please welcome my colleague, Emily Parker, onto stage, who will be talking to CZ via a video link. Thank you all for coming on the last day of consensus, Sunday morning. What's up, CZ? Hey, it's good to be here. Yeah, Great th to thanks, have for, you here. thanks for having me. Great to have you here. So we don't have a lot of time, so let's get right into it. Um, the title of this session is Why Crypto Matters. And we wanted to title it that because, CZ, you're just such a big thought leader in this industry. Not only is Binance the biggest exchange in the world, um, you are really good at like thinking about big picture issues. I've talked to you a bunch over the years. And so I want to start out with this topic that Michael just touched upon, which is, you know, consensus has been on fire, right? There's been like 17,000 people here. It's like a real like, okay, crypto is still very much alive and well. But once you get out of crypto world, as you know, and you talk to sort of the mainstream media and some of like, you know, there's a little bit of a negative sentiment right now about crypto. I've heard you interviewed on this, right? So I guess the question is, because I think this would help all of us, how do you address some of these very common things that you probably hear over and over again? First one is, okay, there's no real use case for Bitcoin. It's just speculative, right? And then the other one is, um, you know, Bitcoin is not proving its existence because it's not acting as a safe haven. It's moving along with equities. Or it's not yet showing its proof of concept as a hedge against inflation. So I guess the point is when people ask you, what is the point of crypto, you know, in this so-called crypto winter, what is your response? Yeah, so I think basically we're still in the early days of crypto, right? <clears throat> in 1995, people doubted the internet. Mm -hmm. And the speed was slow. Things didn't really work all that well. But um, I always tell them, look, look, crypto already has a number of killer use cases. Um, oh, before that, let's, let's look at blockchain crypto in general. Um, it's a new technology for money. And this new technology allows new ways of investments, fundraising, spending, transacting, new business models, uh, everything. Uh, we're still early days, so ma many of the models uh, may or may not work that well. Uh, it's like early days in the internet, um, e-commerce didn't work that well. Um, social media didn't work that well. But uh, we're still early days, but the technology is here. The technology has such potential. So for the people who don't see that, then they just don't see that. And the second point is on the safe haven asset, again, because the industry is so small, the total market cap of crypto is you know, uh, under a trillion, um, one or two trillion right now. And uh, when the stock market, hundreds of trillions go down, uh, people want to conserve cash. And then this little uh, uh, asset type gets, uh, 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 gets affected as well. So um, it just means that we're early days. But because we're, we're early days, we have such potential, we have such opportunity. Um, yeah, so I think for the pe uh, most of the people uh, that I speak to get it, and um, there are uh, mainstream media, other people that are skeptical, um, but that's, that's their choice. But there's such opportunity here, it's, it's so hard for me to miss. So, you know, another thing that I think has taken up a lot of media energy is the collapse of UST, the algorithmic stablecoin, which led to billions of dollars of wealth being lost. And I think some people say, okay, you know, how could this happen in the crypto industry? And I guess the question for you, because I know you understand this well, is how do we prevent something like that from happening again? Or is there no way to prevent something like that from happening again? So short answers, I don't think there's any way to prevent any failure from happening in a new industry. <clears throat> uh, you can't prevent failures. Uh, the, only way, well, the only way to prevent failures is by doing nothing, uh, which basically no innovation at all. Uh, if you innovate, if you're in, new, in a new industry, you, you, you will have failures. Uh, if we look at the internet, the very successful companies in the world, or the most top 10 successful companies in the world, nine of them are internet-based. Um, uh, but you can't build that from day one. You can't just build Google without the previous search engines. You can't build Facebook without the lessons from the previous search, uh, social media uh, failures. So, and in fact, the success of Google probably caused some of those other failures. So, um, uh, so in a new industry, there's many participants and some will eventually win, a few will eventually uh, become big and win, um, and then others will fail. So that's always the case. 
Um, so failure is part of the, of the system. You can say, look, um, let's not do anything. But then it's also risky to do that. You, will, uh, you know, Korea didn't, North Korea didn't embrace the internet. Look, look at where they are now. So um, yeah, so I think that's risking everything. It, can't be, it cannot be avoided. The, uh, the, um, the task to do is um, how do we optimize? How do we reduce that? How do we encourage innovation while minimizing the, um, the, the, uh, uh, the risks or the pains? Uh, and how do we learn from these lessons? So I think, yeah, so um, th there will always be failures. There, there should be failures for there to be success. Yeah, I, I think that makes sense. So I guess sort of brings me to my next question, which is sort of the elephant in the room of the entire crypto industry, which is regulation. And I'd just love to hear your thoughts about what in your view is good regulation and what in your view is over regulation, right? Because as you just said, you know, we don't want to sort of stifle innovation, but regulation is here and it, there's no avoiding it. And I know Binance is trying to work with regulators. So can you just, I, I'd love to hear just some detail from you about like what kind of regulation you think would be good for the industry and where do regulators cross the line in actually stamping out innovation? Sure. So uh, again, regulation is not one thing. So, and there's many different types of regulations and there's many different stances and there's many different countries. So uh, good regulation should be good for the crypto industry. Mm -hmm. Bad regulation should be bad. And what, is, what does good regulation look like? Uh, number one is we should recognize the classification of cryptocurrencies. And it's not just one class. And many people make the mistake of, um, you know, is it assets or is it um, commodities? Is it currency? Is it security? But guess what? Um, in the early days of internet, people always asked, is internet a radio, a TV, a magazine? What is it? But guess what? Internet, there's internet TV, internet radio, internet magazine, and social media, and a bunch of other things. So uh, uh, it's very important to recognize that blockchain crypto is more than one asset type. Mm -hmm. So let's not put all, the, all of the different cryptocurrencies in one, uh, in one bucket. Uh, and so in a large country like U.S., where there's many different regulators, I don't know if they should be regulated by, by, by one regulator or um, if everything fits into one existing bucket. Um, or in most countries, we actually recommend setting up a new regulator to regulate this industry, which, mm -hmm. like, for example, Dubai have done. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> and then the other, uh, uh, the, so classific classification is very important. And then we, if we look at the businesses in this industry, uh, most people focus on the exchange, centralized exchanges. What should we allow and not allow? What kind of, what level of, uh, uh, well, KYC, AML is very important. But what about the other aspects, uh, listing frameworks, um, uh, customer support, uh, customer dispute resolution? So all of these things uh, could be regulated in some way that, that hopefully makes sense. Um, and then there's many other new areas, which I think the new areas should probably, we should adopt a relaxed approach to regulation first and see how the industry grow. So different countries have different, uh, have different stances. Um, um, uh, for example, I talked with uh, uh, the president of, of El Salvador and asked, we talked about listing frameworks. His, his, his view is like, we shouldn't regulate that. We should let the, uh, if you list you know, bad coins, uh, people are not going to use your platform. Um, so the industry, uh, the, industry uh, the market will have a self-selecting, self-regulatory uh, uh, aspect to it. So uh, we're, we're still figuring that, this out. I do believe that we need some, some level of regulation in the world to, for, for this to work. There are many scammers. There are many um, bad players in, the, in, this, in, this, in this industry. So we should try to push those out. And we need to work with the regulators. We need to work with law enforcement. Um, but it's not black and white. To be honest, I, today, I don't think anybody knows what the perfect regulation should be. So this is why we're working with multiple countries in multiple areas, and uh, they all have diff slightly different regulations. Let's see which one works better. And then eventually through time, people will copy the ones that work better and will kind of converge onto one. But I'm curious to hear like what you think is bad regulation, right? Because Binance, you know, in its early days, it really embodied like this. I mean, it still does, but it especially embodied the spirit of crypto. It's like, you know, you were just sort of citizen of the earth. You know, you had no bank account, but Binance was everywhere. And now, you know, it's you're work, you're having to work more with like specific regulatory frameworks in specific countries. Right. Um, so the question is, is like obviously KYC is necessary to a certain degree for money laundering. but. Some would argue that with some centralized exchanges, it's almost like opening a bank account, right? I mean, it's just, it's a very similar process. So the question is, is like, when does regulation go so far that crypto kind of stops being cool and different? It's just kind of like, okay, here, I'm just opening up a bank account. I'm working through a centralized exchange. They have all this information about me. They know, and we're seeing more and more suggestions like that. So like, where do you draw the line and like preserve the unique spirit of crypto that I know you've been fighting for for years? Sure, so I think we, we want to give more options and <clears throat> 
Um, and we want to, there's a few things. Number one is we want to give options to the user. Just, mm -hmm. by, just because the centralized exchange is heavily regulated and requires KYC, AML, and mm -hmm. uh, all of this stuff, doesn't mean that we take any way away from the decentralized world. You can still hold, use your own wallet. Um, you can still have your own Bitcoin wallet, your Ethereum wallet, your BNB wallet, and uh, use DeFi and do whatever. Uh, 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 you still have that choice. We didn't take that choice away. We just made the centralized exchange more regulated. And for centralized exchanges, I view that we have uh, one strong uh, responsibility for us is to integrate with existing financial markets. So that means in working with banks, working with uh, payment service providers so that we can bring the mass users into crypto. So uh, for that, we do, need, we, do need to be, we do need to be a regulated entity in most places we operate. Mm. So uh, we, have to, we, we have to bridge that gap. And then uh, further from us uh, will be the decentralized world. So, um, and I'm still a world citizen. I'm still traveling quite heavily. Um, I still personally do not use a bank that, uh, much at all. Um, I do have a bank account, but I don't use it at all. Um, so um, I think just because a, um, a, a group of businesses, a uh, centralized exchanges gets regulated, doesn't mean that we, we remove the ethos of de decentralization. So in a decentralized world, there will be pockets of people that well, people should be free to do whatever they want. And certain businesses choose to be regulated, certain businesses choose not to be. So um, yeah, so that's kind of my view. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the role of exchanges in regulation, like to what degree the industry should police itself. So I know there's some controversy about this, for example, the tokens that exchanges choose to list. Now, if I understand correctly, I think your attitude is kind of like, list them and let the market sort it out, right? I, I think that's fairly what B B Binance does. No? Okay, well, let, you can correct me in a second. But let's, let's, for example, like Luna 2, right? You guys got some heat for Luna 2. You know, Luna 2 was sort of like, um, you know, UST collapse, and then they were like, you know, a few days later, they were like, hey, here's, you know, here's round two. And some people criticized Binance for being involved with that. So I guess, um, yeah, like what, what sort of, what role do exchanges have in, dis in deciding like, okay, this token doesn't seem safe or this token seems like it might collapse or this token's gonna lose people a lot of money. Should they just list them and let, let it sort itself out or should exchanges play a more proactive role in kind of protecting investors? So I think uh, centralized exchanges definitely have a role uh, of um, due diligence on the projects they list. So that's the approach we, we take. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, uh, we, we, we look at projects very closely before we list them. But at the same time, we list a decent number of projects. We list 400 something projects on, on, on our platform. Mm -hmm. It's not the highest. Most people think, think of Binance as the highest number, but you know, other exchanges list 2,000, 3,000 coins, uh, which we don't do. So um, we do go through a level of due diligence. To be honest, UST Luna was a pretty decent project before it collapsed. Uh, it was very popular. They, they, it's, they often uh, are, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, and the way, you, the way, if you look at how Luna uh, collapsed, uh, it's not like the founder took the money and ran away. It's not, mm -hmm. a, it's not quite a scam. It's just, it's, it's a failure. Uh, it's a massive failure. So even before, even before it crashed completely, they still had, they spent 3 billion US dollars worth of their reserves trying to recover it. They, they bought it at a very low price. Of course, at that point, it's already hopeless. Uh, so, um, so, it's not quite a, what we call a scam scam, but it's definitely a, a catastrophic failure. So, and then Luna too. So we already have a large number of users holding Luna. And when, they, when Luna converts to Luna too, do we support it or not? Cutting it off at that time actually causes much more harm to our users. So it's not a new token listing in our perspective. It's just facilitating um, the transition for our users. So we we need we as an exchange also have to consider what 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 our what our majority of our users want. So we always go by user numbers. So um, if a coin is used by a large number number of users, we tend to think that you know um, that that coin has utility value. So that's our number one correct criteria. So we but we do have to apply a level of judgment for sure. We can't just list any any coin under the sun. And that exchanges that do that does not does not survive. So I just want to turn to China for a moment, just because that's where Binance started. Um, Binance started in Shanghai, sort of saw the writing on the wall, moved internationally. You're still very much a celebrity in China. Um, I've never been to like a Chinese blockchain gathering where your name has not come up. <laughs> they're, they're very, very people are very much following you. Um, so here's the question about China, because I think it's like kind of a larger philosophical question. 
there's sort of this ethos in crypto that no government can shut crypto down. And I totally believe that. That's true. There is still crypto trade in China. But there's no question that it's not what it once was, right? China was the center of the crypto world, the absolute center. And now it's like, just not, right? I mean, I think we don't have really good data, but it's clear that the level of trade in China is not what it was a few years ago before the Chinese government cracked down. So I guess my question for you is, is like, how do you see the Chinese market? I mean, do you see it as coming back? Do you think, um, is, it, is it still going to be a player? Do you think the Chinese government will change its position? I know you don't have a crystal ball, but I'm just curious because it's such an important market. And again, you started there. Uh, sure. Yeah. I'm actually glad you brought this topic up. Um, this is a common misconception you know, uh, by a lot of people. Many people think Binance is a China, Chinese exchange, which is not. Um, I'm Chinese by blood. Both of my parents are Chinese. Um, I was born to, you know, to, uh, to parents, uh, to Chinese parents. I moved to Canada when I was 12. I've been a Canadian for 30 plus years. I don't hold a, ch a Chinese passport. I do speak Chinese, the language, and I have spent 10 years in my adult life in Shanghai sort of doing business. So I kind of, I do have a, I do have a view there. So I want to get that, I want to get that out there very, very clearly. Like Binance is, itself is not a Chinese company at all. We're not affiliate, affiliate we don't have, we're not affiliated with the Chinese government in any way. There's a lot of conspiracy theories around that. So I'm, I want to use this opportunity to, cl to clarify that to, to the extent I can. On the China market, well, and also I want to say that um, I'm a decent celebrity even in US uh, crypto conferences. <laughs> For example, you mean consensus. So um, yeah, I, 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 don't want to be, I don't want to be too arrogant, but uh, yeah, so um, uh, yeah, I, I'm humbled that people do invite us. Uh, but I think the Binance do have an influence globally. Uh, on China, I don't see the policies will change anytime soon. Um, I, uh, I think China's kind of um, fairly restrictive uh, compared to like 10, 20 years ago as a business environment. Um, there's talks about, there's a lot of talks about central planning, uh, common prosperity, all of these things uh, are things we tried in the 1970s um, that, didn't, that didn't work out so well. So um, I, don't, I don't see that changing anytime soon because the Chinese leadership um, structure is set uh, for life. So I don't think that will change anytime soon. So this is why um, I'm pessimistic. I, we, uh, we, we, put out, we put out a China five years ago. So, um, and some of my friends were telling me that recently, like how, how do you see that five years ago that you, know, you, you guys just uh, pulled out completely? So look, um, you know, um, I'm, uh, we, we, we kind of saw certain signs before it. So um, I don't think the, the bans uh, on crypto exchanges, ICOs and mining um, in China will, will be lifted anytime soon. Um, but because of this, it doesn't mean that those activities completely stop. Um, China has a history of um, things moving underground when this you know, uh, regulation prevented. Um, so I think there's still a lot of P2P trading. There's still, there's still a lot of mining going on. Um, ICOs, not so much, but you know, a, lot of, a lot of talent moved to other parts of Asia, other, even in the US to do, uh, to do ICOs, et cetera. So um, people are very mobile these days. So um, in, the, in the blockchain, in our industry, you can work from anywhere. All you need is an internet connection. So we see a lot of that happening already. So I, I know a lot of people who move to you know, Southeast Asia, America, Europe. Um, so yes, it, it, it's sad to see that's happening, but, um, it, but it didn't really stop Bitcoin mining. It didn't really, it had a little dent on Bitcoin mining, but Bitcoin mining hash rate is already at all time high again. So um, we see that this kind of uh, things doesn't really affect the crypto industry that much. But I guess just the, the sort of, and thank you for clarifying everything about China, but just, um... The larger question here, though, is like in the crypto industry, there's a saying like, you know, no government can stop Bitcoin, right? And it's true, as you just said, China did not stop Bitcoin. But I think they accomplished one of their goals, which is just making it a lot harder, right? It's a lot harder to access, you know, crypto trade in China than it was before. And is that just something that concerns you just about government's powers to do that? Because it does seem that to some degree, China successfully just kind of like raised the threshold for getting into crypto. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, I think China is a pretty good case study for this. Um, um, so China was successful doing this to the internet. So they blocked Facebook, Google, Twitter, all, all the all the all the external platforms, and they let the homegrown versions of it grow. And it was quite successful. You know, there's Tencent, Alibaba, etc. Um, but I and then in the crypto space, I think they're doing the same thing. Um, they, or at least it looks like they're trying to do the same thing, which is block Bitcoin, make Bitcoin very hard to access, Ethereum very hard to access, block the centralized exchanges, um, and then do push the digital, uh, central bank digital currency. Um, but here, I think there are some fundamental differences between the central bank digital currencies to native cryptocurrencies in terms of limited supply, 
permission uh, of transactions um, and probably ease of use of fees. So uh, we'll, we'll see how that plays out. I'm not sure exactly uh, that strategy will work. Um, it may, it may not. Uh, I'm somewhat skeptical about that strategy, to be very frank. So um, I, we, still, we still see quite a bit of uh, crypto activity uh, in, uh, uh, in China, but it just now it's just very hidden. Uh, there's, no, there's no way to collect data because the Chinese right. also blocked our website. Um, so we don't see any Chinese IP addresses coming to our website. Um, so uh, it's the, the, the data is very hard to collect now. So turning back to the U.S., I have to ask you this question. Um, there are reports of the SEC investigating BNB. Just curious what your response is to that. So um, we, uh, the SEC did not make an official an, uh, uh, announcement. We did not make any official announcements. We do communicate with every single regulator in the U.S. Uh, and also globally. So we do get questions from them t- from time to time. So um, I'll give you an example, right? Three years ago, there was an article uh, first saying that Binance uh, office got raided by the police. Uh, and then all the other media copied the headline. And then three days later, that original article was changed to some government official visited the Binance office. Those are very, very different things. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, I don't know what the media knows or not. I don't know that. Uh, so, but we have been collaborating with uh, 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 regulatory, regulatory bodies and regulatory agencies very fully. And um, I, I strongly believe that BM, we obviously strongly believe, believe BNB is not a security. Uh, we have very strong legal opinions on that as well. So I don't think that's a risk for us. Interesting. Um, and then, you know, just turning back to sort of the larger like crypto winter, you know, a lot of exchanges such as Coinbase are either like freezing hiring. There was actually um, reports of, of Coindesk rescinding offers that they already made. Um, but it's not just a coin, Coinbase, but there's not just Coinbase. It's like it's... Um, Exchanges all over the world. What, what about Binance? How are, are you concerned at all about faring this crypto winter? And so I think it's not the first time we went, we went through a, a crypto winter. Uh, if we're in a crypto winter or going through a crypto winter, this will be personally my third, uh, Binance is second. So it's not the first time we, we went through this. And this is uh, Binance has always been very frugal on uh, large spendings. We didn't sponsor Super Bowl. We didn't we didn't buy stadium rights. So uh, we have a very healthy war chest. Uh, we in fact, uh, uh, well, we in fact are expanding hiring right now. Right now, it's much better to hire because um, during bull markets, everyone starting their own project and everyone's paying everyone's ridiculous amount of uh, compensation. So now the market is more or more more balanced. There's top talent that's available, and we want to hire them. We're increasing the hiring. We're increasing our M and A activity. We want to do more mergers and acquisitions and investments, and to uh, and to the point where we also actually want to lower our fees right now so um we don't we, we have a decent war chest so i think now over the next couple of years if if we are in a crypto winter we will we will leverage that we will use that to to the max so that's that's interesting so binance will be growing as other exchanges might be contracting uh binance is also involved in some sort of other interesting deals for example looking at forbes getting involved in media twitter can you talk a little bit about that what what the motivation is behind that sure sure so um uh, so for the last three and a half, four years, we've been investing very heavily in crypto in the blockchain industry, and that has done really, really well. And uh, so we're venturing outside a little bit, fur- uh, uh, outside a little bit further outside of the blockchain industry. Um, the idea is to, uh, in each sector, uh, look for one or two good targets and invest in them and become minority shareholders and then help them to come into Web3, uh, integrate with blockchain, accept crypto payments, uh, do micropayments per article, issue NFTs, um, GameFi, uh, all, all this stuff. So uh, hopefully uh, by integrating with blockchain, you should give them new business models that wasn't available to them or their peers before. And if that's successful, that will make them financially stronger. And you will force all their peers to change their business models to integrate with blockchain as well. And if we can do this with every single, uh, with every economic sector, then we, those guys come in, we enlarge the crypto uh, uh, industry. So we're now doing with media, social media, um, a gaming, e-commerce, a number of other uh, industries. So uh, w- uh, we're actually kicking up, kicking up into higher gear in terms of M&A activity now. Interesting. Um, so we don't have too much time left. I just want to make sure you get to say everything you want to say. I mean, you, you clarified um, some of the, as you're right, there is a common misconception about Binance in China. What are just some other things you feel like people don't get about Binance or get wrong about Binance? I'd like to you know, give you the opportunity to you know, set the record straight if there's anything. 
Sure. Um, the other thing where people very, uh, mis uh, uh, very commonly have a misconception about Binance or myself is they think I do everything in Binance and they, you know, they come to pitch projects to me, they come ask me for listings, this and that. But in reality, I actually don't do very much in Binance. Uh, we have a very strong team that does everything else. So I, when people come to me, I'm, I'm really more like a router. I just usually write somebody to, to our team. Um, we have a very strong team now, and um, Binance, well, we, ha we have a strong presence in the U.S. Um, Binance U.S. has like 44 state licenses, and the, uh, the last six, uh, they got in the last few months. So they're, they're progressing on that. We're getting a lot more, li uh, Binance.com, the international exchange is getting more licenses um, uh, as well over the last six months. Uh, we got five or six different licenses, including France, Italy, um, uh, Dubai, Bahrain. So we are moving into this heavily regulated uh, space. And, um, oh, so, Go yeah. So many people still have the concept misconception that Binance is like the Wild West exchange, but and many people even have the worst conception of thinking that's the way how we become successful. I can tell you that's not. Uh, no one will deposit their crypto into a Wild West exchange. Um, people only deposit crypto into exchange they trust. So um, yeah, so we have worked really hard to earn people's trust. And um, there's just a lot of misconception out there by the traditional media who doesn't really understand our industry yet. But I'm sure with time, they will, they their involvement and understanding will become better. Just one real final question and then we have to wrap up. What's your advice for the crypto industry? What could the crypto industry be doing better? What, anything, last words? Sure, I think we need to educate and do risk, uh, risk education, risk warning, risk management much, much better. Um, in a new industry, there's a lot of risks. So um, on that front, I, I encourage all the players to, do, to spend much more resources on education efforts and also um, warning, uh, warning investors about risks. Um, that's something that Binance, you will see Binance do much, much heavily going forward. I think we probably have not done enough uh, in the past and uh, going forward, we'll do that a lot more. Do your own research. Thank you, CZ. It's a real pleasure. Thank you so much, Emily.